We now turn to the glycolytic process to explore the fate of NADH that is produced during the metabolic pathway. The glycolytic pathway yields a total of two ATP and two NADH molecules per glucose processed. As we have learned, NADH can be utilized in the electron transport chain in the mitochondria to help generate the proton gradient required for the oxidative phosphorylation of ATP production. However, NADH cannot directly cross the inner mitochondrial membrane and get into the matrix where NADH can be utilized. Thus, there are two primary ways that the electrons harvested during glycolysis can be transported into the matrix of the mitochondria. The first is via the aspartate malate shuttle system as we learned about in gluconeogenesis. The second is the glycerol 3-phosphate dihydroxyacetone DHAP shuttle system. Alternatively, if aerobic respiration is not possible and oxidized NAD cannot be regenerated in the cytosol by these methods, pyruvate can be turned into lactate by lactate dehydrogenase and NADH can be recycled to NAD plus via this pathway. Recall that the malate aspartate shuttle system is dependent on the functioning of two enzymatic processes. The first is the aspartate aminotransferase that can utilize glutamate as an amine donor to generate aspartate from oxaloacetate. Alpha-ketoglutarate is the other product formed in the process. Depending on the substrate concentrations and other regulatory mechanisms, this enzyme can also work in the reverse reaction to produce glutamate and oxaloacetate. In a different reaction using malate dehydrogenase, oxaloacetate can be reduced to malate using a molecule of NADH as the electron donor. When this happens in the cytosol, NADH can be recycled to oxidized NAD and the resulting malate can be transported into the matrix of the mitochondria. Once in the mitochondria, malate can undergo oxidation in the last step of the Krebs cycle and produce oxaloacetate and one molecule of NADH, which can then be used by complex one in the electron transport chain. Here is the schematic of that shuttle process. Essentially, oxaloacetate is converted to aspartate where it can be transported into the cytosol. Once in the cytosol, it is then converted back into oxaloacetate and can then be reduced to malate using cytosolic NADH as the electron donor. The electrons are then carried back into the matrix of the mitochondria on the malate molecule, where they re-enter the Krebs cycle. Alternatively, depending on the concentration of metabolic intermediates, the glycerol 3-phosphate DHAP shuttle may be employed to reoxidize NADH in the cytoplasm. Cytoplasmic glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase reduces dihydroxyacetone DHAP to glycerol 3-phosphate using NADH generated in glycolysis as the electron donor. This restores the oxidized NAD pool for continued use in glycolysis. The glycerol 3-phosphate can be oxidized back to DHAP using glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme that's bound as a peripheral membrane protein in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The electrons from the glycerol are then transferred to a molecule of FAD, forming FADH2 and restoring the DHAP pool. Similar to the succinate dehydrogenase enzyme, the FADH2 produced in this reaction can be transferred to a coenzyme Q electron shuttle in the inner membrane and enter the electron transport chain. In summary, if the malate aspartate shuttle is used, the energy of NADH is conserved in the process and can be used to produce approximately 2.5 to 3 ATP molecules. If the glycerol 3-phosphate DHAP shuttle is used, NADH is converted to FADH2 to enter into the electron transport chain and will only be worth approximately 1.5 ATP. In animals, muscle tissue can withstand short bursts of anaerobic metabolism. Under these circumstances, the tissue is not getting enough oxygen to produce ATP aerobically. 
For example, you may be running away from a lion and not be able to breathe fast enough to keep up with the muscle tissue demand. In this case, only glycolysis is available to produce more ATP. And even though only two ATP are produced per glucose, it's better than none. In this case, the NADH produced in the second half of glycolysis needs to be reoxidized back to NAD to keep running the glycolytic pathway. To do this, the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase reduces pyruvate to lactate and recovers the needed oxidized NAD. This is shown here in this diagram, where NAD is recycled in the process. If anaerobic respiration occurs within muscle tissue, the muscle will need to offload the lactate into the bloodstream so that it can keep recycling the NADH to NAD. The lactate is then taken up by the liver, where it can be converted back into pyruvate and utilized in the gluconeogenic pathway if needed. This is known as the Cori cycle.